What's up Filmmaker, today I'm going to show you how you can turn your wobbly handheld shots into smooth gimbal looking shots. And no, we are not using the regular post stabilizer inside of any video editing app or Catalyst Browse or any plugins. We are going to use a secret tool inside of DaVinci Resolve. And I can tell you this method saved my life as a filmmaker a couple times already. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. Alright, as you can see, I've prepared two clips here. One is unstabilized on the left side and one is stabilized on the right side and as you can see the, the beginning is pretty jiggly in comparison to our super smooth clip here on the right side all right so let's get started I know these are vertical clips but you can also apply this technique to horizontal clips as well all right let me create a new timeline here for our tutorial so I'm gonna call it 02 tutorial and make it a vertical timeline here and I'm going to drop our clip in here with copy paste. Let me reset everything here on position and of course I created a speed ramp as you can see here. So this is our speed curve, nothing special and now I'm going to show you how you can apply the effect. So important note is that you apply the speed ramp first because afterwards you have to track the whole clip again if you don't do it like that. So it will be a waste of time. So we're going to do this inside of Fusion but don't worry it's pretty easy. You can just go to effects then search for adjustment clip and I'm gonna drop it here right on top of it. You can also do it on the clip itself but I prefer to do a adjustment clip above the clip itself. Just align it to the same length and now if we hit fusion it will just take automatically the highest clip so let's go into fusion I don't even have to select it I can just go into fusion and it will take the adjustment clip right inside of fusion don't worry it's just gonna be one single node for this one so what you're gonna do is select media in one hold down shift and space and now type in planar and search for the planar tracker click on add and now you have it here inside of the node and my tip here is go to the middle of your whole clip so you have a reference point in the middle you can also do it in the beginning but i would preferably do it in the middle of the clip look for an object which is visible and also kind of in the center of your video so i'm gonna take this little square here the display of the monogram console so it automatically changes to this selection tool if you select your planar tracker and use it for the first time. Otherwise you can also go here and select the pen tool if it didn't, but it should automatically activate it. Now I'm gonna draw a square around it. You can also do like circles etc. If you just want to move one handle just hold down control and you can move it like that but I need a perfect square here. Just draw around your subject, leave a little space in between so it knows what the subject is going to be. And this looks pretty perfect to me. I don't have it to do it super perfect, but just something like that is just enough. And now another important step is to set the reference time, because as you can see, the reference time is on zero and we are here on frame number 13 down here you can see it frame zero would be at the beginning we are at 13 so an important note is to set your reference time to where you are right now in the timeline after that i would suggest you to start with motion type translation because otherwise it will look pretty weird for more complex movements maybe you want to add rotation or scale even but i would start with the translation and this will give you a pretty good result already. If not, you can always go to the next one and just level up your way until you're satisfied with the result. Everything else, I leave it as it is. And now I'm gonna track forward. Actually, it doesn't matter if you track forward or backwards first. Then we are on frame 27, but we have to go back to our reference point and you don't have to do it manually. You can just click on go up here and then track backwards. And as you can see, all the white dots here are tracked areas. Now, if I play the clip, nothing happens. As you can see, it's, it's still wiggly. So what we have to do is go up here to the operation mode, open the drop down, and select stabilize. And now the clip is pretty stable. Let me go back to edit so you can see it even better. Let's play it from the beginning. As you can see, this is pretty smooth right now. 
I played a couple times so you can see it. Maybe you noticed it or maybe not on YouTube, it's maybe too small, but you see these black bars here on the side. It's because DaVinci Resolve needs a little bit of framing, of course, to stabilize it like every stabilizer. So we are going to fix that as well. There are multiple ways to do it. You can just zoom in on your media or you can go into the Fusion tab at a transform node but I would just go here, zoom out, search for an area which has the biggest empty area, like here. Then you can just select your planar tracker and go to compute stabilization, click on it, stabilization finished, OK. Go to crop, auto crop, and it will crop the axis area. Let's go back, play it one more time, and as you can see, there's no black bars or anything weird anymore. All right, here's just another quick example for you. Let's see a before. And as you can see, I messed up a little bit because I was in a hurry. And you can see that up and down movement. And now I'm just gonna enable the adjustment clip here so you can see how smooth it is afterwards. Let's go into the adjustment clip just real quick for you guys so you can see what I've done. So again, I did the same probably. Yeah, I started here in the middle as I told you. This is even an old project, so I didn't even know what I did. I just opened it right now. So as you can see, I did the same here. Go to the middle reference point choose translation the pattern is here i just created a rectangle around this subject here or i think it tracked the circle here in the middle and there you go super smooth shots this is already it this is how you apply the super smooth effect and you can use this technique on gimbal moves on handheld moves but the best movements for me so far are these top-down twist moves like these ones these are the best way you can use it but you can also keep something in the middle all right i hope this video was informative and helpful for you if you have any further questions just let me know down below in the comments and this video might be interesting for you so i will see you there next